So we screwed up the internet, right? Do you remember when we were talking about how the internet was going to bring freedom and democracy to everybody? You know what Phil would say, Dr. Phil would say, say, how's that working out for you? Not very well. Now maybe, in retrospect, entrusting the safety of our democracy to Groupon was not such a great idea. But the risk here is that we are about to do the same with the blockchain. Right now, while we are talking about all the awesome, wonderful, social good things that blockchain can do, almost all the real work of blockchain done by large enterprises is happening on private, permissioned blockchains. Right? And a world of private, permissioned blockchains is not the world that we should aspire to. It's not what we should hope for. And I want to take a moment to tell you why all of our vision of the great things that blockchain can bring us is at risk. Right? First of all, private permission blockchains don't scale. Imagine for a moment that you're a mango farmer and a big retailer comes to you and says, I want to track all of your mangoes. Right? And you say, great, that sounds awesome. Right? And then another big retailer comes to you and says, hey, we'd like to track your mangoes too. Can you join our blockchain? Oh, and by the way, you're going to need to join the shipping company's blockchain and the insurance company's blockchain and the payment company's blockchain. And pretty soon, it's a giant mess. Right? It doesn't scale. It doesn't seem any better than what we have now. Maybe it's worse. Right? So number one, private blockchains, in the long run, they, they solve some very specific good problems now. They do not scale for everybody to use. Number two, and this I think is even more important, there is no such thing as permissioned innovation. It doesn't exist. Right? A permissioned blockchain world is a world without innovation. Right? Ask any taxi company, hey, are you guys good with like Uber? What do you think the answer is? No. Right? Permissioned and innovation do not exist together. So uh, if we want to avoid this fate, we need to think about what will actually work. And what will work are public, permissionless, open infrastructure for everyone to use. Now, the problem with that, the problem that exists today, is that you cannot conduct a legal, private, secure business transaction over a public blockchain today. You can do pieces of that we can do. We can do transactions that are legal. We can do transactions that are secure. But we can't do the whole package together. Right? And if we want public blockchains to be usable by enterprises, if we want the value proposition to be like email, something that works for everybody everywhere, then I think there's three things that we all need to do right, uh, together. Right? And there's certainly what those of us at EY are working on trying to make happen. Number one. We need to make private transactions secure on public blockchains. And I believe kind of the key to this is probably zero knowledge proofs. Right? There are a bunch of other tools that are in development, but our top priority at EY from an RMD perspective is making industrialization, industrializing the zero knowledge proof technology. Right? This, this is absolutely foundational. Number two, I believe we must tokenize fiat currency. Right? And I'm not saying that, that Bitcoin or Ether is bad or that cryptocurrency has failed. That is not what you should take away from this. But the fact is, almost every company and almost every person in this room, we all get paid in dollars. We pay our taxes in dollars. Right? We pay our mortgages in dollars. Right? And so most transactions on the blockchains are going to be in dollars or euros or yen. Right? I think that's, that's reasonable and realistic. And we need a legal framework that enables and supports the tokenization of fiat currency. The future of contracts on the blockchain are my fiat currency tokens for your product, service, or asset tokens. Thirdly, we need a robust regulatory infrastructure that supports a decentralized architecture. These are not inconsistent. We have regulatory rules today that are enforced on decentralized systems. I believe it's possible. We can write the rules into smart contracts. We can write the rules into tokens. We can enforce KYC and AML, all the rules of the regulatory infrastructure in a decentralized architecture. You don't have to have a centralized permissioned infrastructure in order to have the rule of law. But it's going to take work to make all of that happen. So that's what we are investing in at EY. Uh, and what I want to close with, what I want to remember, all of you to remember, is something that's very simple. We are at a fork in the road. Public blockchains are not yet ready for secure private enterprise transactions. 
We can solve that problem in one of two ways. We can go down the private blockchain path, and we can live in a world of walled gardens, where you can plan to pay somebody per transaction, and then you can pay them integrate your walled garden with somebody else's walled garden. You know who these people are, right? And you know what they're planning on doing. Or we can go down the path of making public blockchains open and sustainable and what works for everybody. So as, as I wrap up here, let me just finally say and repeat myself, there is no such thing as permissioned innovation. So what do you want? Thank you. Well done. Well done.